How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So part three of this Jeep restoration and we're going to be doing vacuum lines today. Right now it's idling pretty rough and I think part of the reason has to do with the vacuum lines are all out of order. They're either missing, broken, plugged and so we're just going to start fresh with every single vacuum line and replace it. Now there's three sets of parts here according to Dorman um, and I don't quite remember them. I'll, I'll maybe write them on the screen there but uh, this is one set, this is one set and then they like plug together and then route wherever they go in the vehicle. So let me show you what the vehicle sounds like right now. Uh, just at idle when I throw the vehicle in drive, it sounds pretty rough. So this is busted off. This is broken back here, and it's supposed to go there. This one's taped off. These two are actually connected. These two are taped or plugged. The, they're missing up here. They're supposed to go, there's three hoses missing here. One is plugged. This one I think is missing. Yeah, there's another one that's busted. Let's toast. Whoever thought it was a good idea to use tape on these vacuum lines didn't really know what they were doing. Oh yeah, that'll make the engine run better. Well, right where all these other vacuum lines sit, way down under here, looks like there's one more that someone tried to plug. That's it. Well, that's what should be in the engine, and that's what was in the engine. So let's see. We got one plugged up. Looks like that's a sheet metal screw. Two more that are plugged up. This one was plugged up. This one was broken. This one was venting out to the atmosphere, and this one was broken, so no wonder the Jeep was running rough. So let's get the easiest one out of the way first. This is the back grommet. All right, that looks like it's in. Moving on, I got this in place, the PCV hose, and then these two hoses are gonna go down in here, there and there. This long hose will go back in here, get that set. Found another vacuum line that was busted and taped off. Okay, so this hose sits on top like that. Top of that fitting makes a bend right into here. I can see why Jeep did away with all these vacuum lines a couple years later with the XJ, but got three going here two here, one here, and then I forgot there's another vacuum line that goes here. This one's actually ripped anyways. I don't know if that is included with the kit, but yeah, it's broken off too. So I'll point this out later, but one of the vacuum hoses from this side had to go down into here. And then I just gotta get this hose on and really that's the hardest part. This small top left hose here goes underneath all the way around right into here. The bottom right hose goes all the way underneath and it routes to here. And then bottom left comes underneath again into this fitting right there into the air box cleaner. And then I had to reuse this hose here. This is some sort of flapper for the intake and that routes all the way to the right one here. I can't imagine why someone wouldn't take like 30 bucks and just replace the vacuum lines instead of putting this sticky tape over each line. 
seems kind of silly to me, but I guess someone was on a budget when they were working on this Jeep. But anyway, let's fire it up and see if it runs any better. A lot better. It sounds like it's idling a little low, but it's okay. So guys, who knows if those vacuum lines actually are making a difference, but at least it's good to get it back to its original state. I think the most important one was this hose that goes all the way in the back of the valve cover. Because when it was idling, I mean, you could hear a sucking sound. So it was obviously looking for a vacuum. So, and again, when I throw it in drive, it seems to idle a little rough. So I might need to check the transmission fluid. Well, that could be my problem. Yeah, look at that guys. There's barely anything on that stick. It's supposed to be all the way up to here, and it's all the way down there. I wasn't looking for problems with the transmission. I thought I'd just pull the dipstick while I had the camera rolling, and yeah, it's probably two, three quarts low. Who knows, but uh, let's start there. Let's add a little transmission fluid and see if that does any better. It's probably starving the pump. So we'll start things off with half a quart. All right, let's see where we're at. Better. All right, guys, let's see if this thing will make it up to 60 mile an hour. There's 35, 40, 45. It's doing great, guys. The steering wheel's a little loose, but it turns nice. The brakes are okay. Let's see, there's 55 right there. Let's see if we can make it to 60. There's 60. And there's 65. It's a little loud in here because of the door seals that are old, but this thing drives great. No hands. It's doing awesome. <laughs> what a great Jeep. There's a couple things that I got to sort out, but I couldn't have asked for a better project for the money. All right, everyone, that was a real successful test drive. Got all the way up to 65, and I noticed that it has a rear main seal leak, and that's okay. All these four liter Jeeps have them. Uh, it's kind of a bummer because it is kind of leaking more than I'd like it to, but uh, for what it is, guys, I'm still really pleased with the Jeep. So got it in the shop here, and I'm going to just move on down the line to the next thing that needs to be fixed. Now, one of the things that had wrong was the tag light that goes above the license plate wasn't working so I took apart the entire hatch so what I had to do was undo this entire panel here all these screws and plugs and everything it turns out the wiring was okay I had hooked up to the multimeter and there was no issues it was unplugged there's a little connector that sits right in here and it was just unplugged. So just little maintenance things like that go a long way. So now the tag light works and I'm having no issues there, but now I'm having trouble with the blinker. Now the right blinker works fine, but the left blinker just stays solid on if it works at all. Now there's two filaments in here, a taller filament and a smaller filament. Now this is what your hazards go to and your turn signal. And let me show you what I'm dealing with. So when I turn the vehicle on and I do the left turn signal, the light will just stay on. Now the right works fine. It's blinking, no trouble whatsoever. It's a little slow, but the car is off, so uh, the alternator is not going. But still, the left just stays solid green. I went underneath the Jeep here and I checked all the fuses. And this is the flasher here. and cleaned up the points a little bit it's just two leads but I don't think it's the flasher because if it was bad the right turn signal wouldn't be working at all going back up here you can see it's not flashing and it's just staying a solid stream of light and it's pretty dim too whereas this one is a lot brighter so if we come back here and we put our flashers on magically they start blinking all of a sudden it's starting to work and we'll get the flashers off again and we'll try the blinker and back to the same problem 
So I didn't really know what to do from here. Uh, it seemed to be real finicky. Like if I would turn off the blinkers and on again with the switch, it would start going a little bit. Uh, then you try it again and it just stop. So I didn't really know what to do from there. So doing what I do, I just looked up other YouTube videos and sure enough, there's another guy who has uh, been working on these Jeeps for a long time, knows his stuff. And he had the exact same problem as this Jeep, almost to the letter. So he blamed the light socket and that's what I'm gonna try. They're pretty cheap, uh, just three wires here. It's made in China, so I know it's high quality. And we're gonna start there before I start digging into the steering column and blaming the switch and the connection that goes down to the, underneath the, the dash there. It gets kind of expensive and a lot of parts have to be moved out of the way first. So let's start with the simple things. And if it's not right, then hey, there's nothing wrong with throwing good parts at these Jeeps. Before I started, I also forgot to show you what happens when I turn on the headlight here. The light just disappears. And then when you turn off the headlight, it comes on again. So something's definitely wrong here. All right, well, I never like cutting electrical wires, especially when I don't know the main cause of the problem. Honestly, I'm just going off the recommendation of a YouTube video, but why not, right? It's only a $400 Jeep. Hope that wasn't stupid. So what I'm banking on is that something is gummed up in here. Either corrosion has taken over from being 30 some years old or uh, just from heat or the points in here are kind of corroded. So it's not bad putting a new socket in anyway, so I can't do anything wrong. All right, so let's see what happens when I connect these wires. There's a brown, a yellow, and black on the socket and gray with the black stripe blue and black on the wire end so i don't have a wiring diagram on me so i'm just gonna wing it what could possibly go wrong right so we'll start with black to black that's pretty self-explanatory i'll bet you that's ground and then let's do the blue to brown let's finish up with the yellow to the black and gray it's working let's try the blinker Maybe I should have the car on, huh? That would help. All right, high beams or headlights and blinker. Let's try the right one first. Okay, right one's working. Let's try the left. Nothing. Well, that's with the headlights on and the blinker on as well and the bulb still goes off. Well, that didn't quite work. I thought that was going to be a quick fix. So I guess when in doubt, start crossing wires. Let's do brown to the gray and black. Let's do blue to the yellow. All right, let's try it again. So after trying to work on that socket and getting nowhere, uh, I decided to kind of reevaluate, maybe look at a wiring diagram. And after not finding any good wiring diagrams for this particular socket that I installed, I just decided to take a break. And it occurred to me the hazard light has the same type of connection as the flasher. So I just swapped them underneath the fuse panel. And let me show you what I found out. So all I did, guys, was just take this hazard flasher and the turn signal flasher and just swapped them. So that's the hazard flasher in the turn signal slot. Now look at the turn signals. All of a sudden it's working. So I haven't messed with the flashers. The hazard flasher is still where the turn signal flasher should be i just put in this original turn signal socket you can see it's getting a lot dimmer so i think the recipe to solve this is a new socket as well as a new flasher i think they were both going out okay so i think i have it nailed so with the headlights on these are marker lights so the top filament is on on both bulbs and the bottom filament the shorter one is the flasher and let me prove to you on the left the top filament is the marker light and the bottom one is flashing. So these are good to go. So truly this socket was bad. And so black to black, the gray and black goes to the brown and the blue goes to the yellow is how I ran it. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this week's video. You know, everything on the Jeep that I fixed this week was pretty simple. The tag light was literally just disconnected from the harness. I wish I showed you, it was kind of a, a silly fix. And then everything else was just 
pretty simple to put back in place. You know, those vacuum lines I just referenced from another video off YouTube, same with the socket. Um, it's pretty cool that they've made so many millions of these Jeep Cherokees that every single problem these Jeeps have, someone has probably run across it by now and it's easy to fix. So I'm real thankful for it. And you know, when I was first buying this Jeep, I couldn't really have cared less about it. It was just something fun to wrench on in the meantime of me getting my power stroke up and running. But the more and more I worked on it and wrenched on it and the more I found out how, par how cheap parts are and uh, most of the things are easy to get to, that Jeep was really growing on me. And I'm still gonna sell it because I don't need it, but it's a pretty fun Jeep. Also wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been commenting and giving me advice on the Jeep. You guys have really blown up the comment section on with this project and I really appreciate it. The support and feedback has been awesome. So I wanted to say thank you to everyone. Last thing, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of what next week's video is gonna be and it's showcasing my new welding table. Now it's not gonna be a very long video, but I still wanted to show you it because it's gonna be the backbone of a lot of projects in the future. Now I've worn a welding table for years. Every single time I've had a welding project, I've always had to do it on my hands and knees, always end up getting burned and it's just not a lot of fun. So I actually got a lot of free steel from a local hardware store and was able to build this in about two weeks. And I uh, just want to quickly showcase it in the, the next video. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.